Hey uh, folks, uh, so tonight I've got the one, the only, the fourth or fifth or sixth DMG backlight kit, um, but this one is the one from Funny Playing. This is the one that has the pixel grid that so many people seem to like, but that's besides the point. Let's take a look here. Um, so this one was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, I don't know, I think we can I think we can take a look here, see what we got. Um, full disclosure, my kit is missing a few pieces, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so the kit is going to come with a glass lens, and this lens is the same size as uh, any standard Game Boy lens. Got this. As you can see, the... Let me actually put that over that. You can see the cutouts. Uh, any, oh, actually, you know what? The cutout is a little bit bigger. I learned something. Let's compare the top and the bottom there. I think it is a little bit bigger. Well, there you go. I thought the cutout was the same size. Uh, so if you have a Play It Loud model that you're modding, um, or if you have a preference for the darker style lenses, the cutout is going to be a little bit different. Actually, it looks the same on these two. Oh wait, no, it's bigger. Let's. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought it was the same, so I'm getting all distracted here. But as we can see, the top or the up and down is what about 44.5. Whereas the stock size lens is 43.25. So yeah, it's about a mil and a quarter, a millimeter and a quarter bigger. Um, the more you know. Uh, it also comes with the adhesive gasket to uh, adhere the LCD screen to the Game Boy uh, shell. You don't have to use this. I highly recommend it because it's going to keep dust out from in between the screen and the uh, lens. But if you use this, beware, you know, be aware that if you use this, your install is permanent. Uh, you're likely not getting the screen out in one piece, uh, not without a lot of effort, and even then you still might break it as, uh, as evidenced by what happened last time with this Game Boy, but that's... It's another video. Um, should that happen to you, these LCDs are actually pretty cheap here. Uh, you can get them direct from Funny Playing for like six ninety or something, just under seven dollars. Uh, and there's the LCD itself; has a nice mirror background there. Um, these look pretty good. Uh, this is the same LCD as the Game Boy Pocket kit. And in fact, this looks like the exact same ribbon as the Game Boy Pocket Kit. Um, we'll test that out shortly. And you also get a ribbon cable for connecting the new PCB to the back of the console. So let me set this stuff aside here. Uh, on this new PCB, let's see what we get here. Um, there's not a whole lot. Mine comes with some lovely flux residue, uh, but that's okay. As far as active circuitry on this thing, there really isn't any. There's a couple diodes, resistors. Um, there is this thing here, U1. Uh, I don't know what it is, what the purpose is. It's probably a voltage regulator or something. And I can't quite make a. Oh, there we go. Uh, text is T R B U A, T R A U A. I can't tell. I guess I'm getting old. No, that's B. T R B U A. Uh, don't know what it is, don't know what it does. I'm guessing it's a voltage regulator, though. Um, replacing the contrast wheel, we have a. Uh, whatever the hell these are called. It's not a rotary encoder, but you have your up, you can flick it up, you can flick it down, and then there's a um, push in button there. And then you've just got the diodes for the button matrix, and that's pretty much it. So this isn't going to, 
I don't know. There's there's not a whole lot to this. All the magic is happening on this thing here. And there are still a couple solder points, but you do not have to solder to the ribbon. Uh, this board is going to take care of all that. Um, so let me set this aside for the time being, and we shall focus on tonight's donor. So I've got this bad boy here. Uh, it clearly needs some help. I just recently picked up a lot of Game Boy consoles because the original lot I picked up for all these backlight mods, well, I kind of ran out of consoles. I didn't think there would be so many Game Boy backlights. and. You know, for each mod, I try. I like to try and start fresh, uh, in case someone's trying to follow along. Um, so, here we are with another fresh Game Boy. Uh, of course, this one's seen way better days. The front is quite a bit, quite yellowed. Surprisingly, the back isn't yellowed at all, even at the edges there. I don't know what that's about, but there it is. There are ways to fix the OEM shells, like if. If you want to use your OEM shell, which when you can, I suggest it. Um, you can retrobrite them, and I think the Retro Future's done a pretty good video on that, so you should check out his channel if you want to do that. I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, it's usually not worth it. In my experience, shells like this, these bottom of the barrel consoles, they usually have other issues that just aren't worth dealing with. This one is so far feeling pretty good, so maybe I'll set it on the project shelf. But as you probably guessed, or as you probably saw from the thumbnail, I'm not using an OEM shell for this build. So we'll pop that out. We'll need to take this apart later, but for the purposes of power usage testing, we will be using this front board because this one has a not broken screen as opposed to that one. Um, not quite sure what happened here. I'm guessing someone just dropped it. Something landed on this corner or something. I don't know. Besides the point. Set that junk aside. Uh, I should have grabbed the same game that I usually test with. So I'll be right back. Hang on. And there we have it. The one, the only Pokemon Yellow. The exact same cart that I've tested all the other mods with. All right, so let's grab a baseline for power usage here. I usually test at, what, 4.2 volts, I think it is. Now we'll do 4.4. Shouldn't matter too much because we're just looking at um, wattage. So as long as I test, well, as long as I pay, as long as I record the voltage and the milliamps, then we should be good. So that goes there. That goes there. Is that gonna hook in? Am I gonna have to solder something? Eh, I think that'll work. that in frame. Yeah, I think it's booting. Okay. Let's plug in the screen then. I've always loved this part. It's my favorite part. There it is. Membrane, if I can. Come on. All right, so I guess we wandered down to 4.3 volts. Let's bring that back up. 
Wait, I should be testing at 4.8. I'm sorry. That way I'm more consistent with uh, what I usually do. All right, so in the overworld at 4.8 volts in Pokemon Yellow, same cart that I usually test with, we're pulling, what, 54 to 56 milliamps? We'll call it 55 milliamps. All right, that's, I don't know, that, that's not fantastic, but that's pretty much on par with these Game Boy consoles. Um, they do use four AA batteries, so it's not like the battery life doesn't last for many, many hours. Uh, we can set that aside, we won't need that. We will need this stuff though. Let's test it out. That just clips in there, like that. This goes in here, like that. This is actually pretty similar to that one mod I did on a original Game Boy to drop a um, Game Boy Pocket LCD in. I don't think that a Game Boy Pocket screen will work because this doesn't have the game the LCD regulator on it. But fuck it, maybe I'll try it. Inquiring minds and all, you know. Oh, and this is oh, I hate this. I think I'm gonna plug it into this first. probably plug the board in first if you're testing it loose which you should test it before just getting everything installed probably plug the board that cable in first all right let's try it out hey it works I mean like I totally expected it to work but I already see a potential issue though and I don't know how I'm gonna resolve it I'll get to that in just a minute here. So in the overworld, at this default brightness level, I forgot about that. I don't need membranes on DMGs apparently. Um, we're pulling at 4.8 volts, 196 to 197 milliamps and let's bring the brightness down you just kind of flick it down there it's pretty dark if I turn off all my uh, desk lights you can probably see it all three of them there we go uh, now it's down to 109 110 and let's see what max brightness is Oh, that, I guess that was max brightness, because we're back up to 197, 198. So let's, uh, I guess before we get any further, let's discuss the issue that I think I just noticed. I have made for this screen, I'm going to disconnect the screen so I don't ruin it, set that aside. And I'm going to disconnect this ribbon here, set that aside. Oh wait, I probably should have left that in. Whoops. Let's put the ribbon back in. I have made a bracket for this. I, um... You know, it's very much so a prototype, and I made this well before Funny Playing released their bracket, so I feel kind of robbed on that, but, you know, it's not like... It's not like it's my design they stole, they just happened to come up with a very similar design. Anyway, I think they are... Uh, I don't think I spaced this right. I spaced this 
with the intention that um, you know working off the assumption that the spacing would be the same on the pocket and the original DMG LCD and that is not the case you could see that big gap up at the top there and yes this screen is broken which is why I was using it for testing um, but I think that's gonna be an issue and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna work around that I think <sighs> I hate to say it I don't think I'm doing this video I don't think I'm finishing this video tonight and that is the worst or maybe I'll just pause and see if I can't get that bracket printed um, yeah I'll be back I guess see if I can't get a bracket printed Right, so I got to my 3D printer. I got the uh, cooler torn off, literally, because it had left me a spicy meatball. Um, I had a bed adhesion failure, and I didn't catch it until way too late, and I just turned the printer off and didn't feel like dealing with it. Um, by way too late, I mean it had already finished the print and cooled down, otherwise I would have removed it while the printer was still hot. Um... And yeah, the fasteners were all stripped out because 3D printed plastic turns out doesn't really turn up or hold out, hold up too well against um, torque. And yeah, I got that torn off. I already have another one of these, so I wouldn't have had to waste time printing another one, but the hot end's fucked. I need a new hot end. Uh, in trying to pick all the plastic out, I ended up breaking off one of the wires to the um, the hot thingy, I forget the terminology, and yeah, now I need to wait for parts. Um, so we're just gonna wing it and see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, I just broke it. <gasps> there it goes. Um, yeah, my bracket is, my bracket works just fine, assuming this were the MGB kit. Wait, I just had an idea. I just, I just had an idea. Let's try something. The, these ribbons look like the exact same thing. So I'm banking on that being the case and they just have different firmware. So let's see if that is true. This is the DMG one in my right hand and the MGB one in my left hand. And yeah, they even have the exact same revision number on them. So hardware wise, I'm confident they're the same thing. I'm confident that plugging this in will not blow it up. But if everything else works and it just moves the position of the uh, LCD, then we'll just we'll just go with it, and I'll figure something else out for the MGB. I can even get this plugged in. Oh, nope. How bizarre. There must be something about being plugged into this board then. Well, there you go. Uh, I guess that answers one question. Um, these are the same boards. Or the same, uh, yeah, because I can still cycle through everything just fine. There are a lot of color palettes. All right, we'll leave it on that for now. Okay. I don't know what to do. Because here is the risk I run right now. 
I can install it as is, just wing it, like I did with my pocket, but I'm sure you all saw how that worked out. I ruined that. Um, or I can put this video off another week while I wait for yet more parts. But out of sheer curiosity, we're going to try a regular Game Boy Pocket screen in here. I really don't think it's going to work because, like I said, it's missing that other voltage regulator. But I just, I gotta know. Yeah, I didn't think so. But I just had to know. It doesn't work. You know what? One more thing. One more thing. Just for shits and giggles. Oh, no, that requires soldering. I'm not going to try it. Okay, so screw it. I guess let's just... Let's just do it. Let's see what happens. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I'm going to not be... I'm going to not use the adhesive today for this install because uh, I have a feeling I'm not going to get it right the first try, and I don't want to uh, ruin yet another screen even though I do have spares. It's not the right screw. Okay. So I am reshelling this thing. Might as well do that part first. Gotta take the game out, and then it, uh, it comes right out. All right, so the shell I'm going to be using for this, I picked up one of these, um, and yes, I know what this is. Um, I'm not going to be discussing my opinions on this particular shell in this video. I'm making another video that will go up within the next couple weeks here, because I want to try and get a uh, long-term impression on this. But, uh, install the power switch here. I can already tell the motherboard is a little bit tight in here. I mean, not that it should cause any issues, but just harder to get in. Alright. And this comes with a whole host of screws. And I'm thinking we're supposed to use the screws it comes with and not the original screws. Because these are... Well, they, they look like they're different thicknesses, but I don't know. These seem to fit nicely, so we'll go with it. I will say one thing I like about these shells in particular is they do already come with the battery contacts and the cart shielding. You don't have to transfer that over. Not that I don't mind transferring over the cart shielding, but more often than not, oh this isn't that Game Boy, um, those battery contacts are just super gross, corroded. They're oh, it's not this Game Boy either. Okay, never mind. You'll have to take my word for it. Okay, so this is the bottom. We can set this aside for now. We need to focus on the top. And here we are. So on a normal, on a stock DMG shell, if you're using your original shell, there are two screw posts up here that you have to trim off. Um, grab my 
Kitsch bench shell here. You can see where I trimmed off that one and trimmed off that screw post there. Just those two screw posts. You don't need to trim off this rib up here. Um, but this shell comes pre-trimmed with those two posts just not even there and with that rib missing. Again, you don't need to trim that rib, just those two posts. You do, however, need to trim the opening on this shell. So if we take the LCD here, I'm going to peel out just the middle for now. If we can, I need a knoif. And you can save the middle adhesive bit for uh, something else. This is really good tape. I'm afraid to peel this off so early. Just knowing me, I'm going to get my fingers all over it. But this side isn't adhesive. There's still adhesive in there, though. All right. So if we take this lens, pop it on there, you can see that the, uh, the bezel is visible in front of the lens. So we will need to do a little bit of a trim. This lens does not fit in this shell. Oh yeah, it does. It's just real tight. Okay. I'm going to set this aside somewhere, hopefully where I don't ruin it. And let's focus on trimming this. So I'm going to try a somewhat new method. Um, I've done I've done this partially before, uh, but I need a straight edge. How about this ruler here? Will that work? That'll work. So, oh, there's not a, uh, will this pen work? Kinda. Oh, look at this moron not prepared for videos. Hang on, I'll be right back. Sharpie. All right. Wouldn't be a video from yours truly if everything went smoothly, now would it? So I'm going to mark off a straight line. Just, I don't know, a couple millimeters. Is that? Yeah, all of one millimeter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't want to take too much, but if you don't take enough, you'll have to go back for seconds. And presumably future versions of this Retro 6 shell will already have this cut out, so... If you're watching this in the future when that has already occurred, feel free to ignore this point. Now is the hard part, I think. I'm going to cut this out with a razor here. I'm just going to use my box cutter. Um, I guess I'll use this one because it's the one at my desk. But I'm also going to do something I haven't tried before with my power tools. Uh, so I'm going to drill into the corners here to try and get myself some nice smooth corners. Uh, it should make the cutting easier, but I need to put this on top of something that I'm not afraid to ruin, just in case I poke through. So the intention, and quite frankly, I think I'm going to have to do this off camera because I need to put my drill basically where the camera is. Uh, but the intention is I'm going to drill just inside the corner mark here. So right about there, so that the circumference of my drill bit is uh, tangential to the lines I made. I'm not putting the center in the corner. I'm putting it offset so that my circle just barely touches those lines on two edges. That way I have nice rounded corners. Um, I 
Actually, I think I could just zoom that out. Yeah, that'll work. All right. That's exactly what I was going for there. And it's nice soft plastic. I missed a little bit there, but it's not too bad. I can work around that. Done with that. Okay. Now I'm going to just make a very light score line, trying to follow the line I already drew. I'm not pushing very hard, just oops. Start from this side. Just progressively pushing a little bit harder. And we're not going to cut through the whole shell this way. We're just scoring it enough so that we can eventually bend and snap it. You can cut through the whole shell that way if you want, but that is very time consuming. Ooh. I veered off course there. It's okay if that happens. The easiest way to work around it is to just start again, but going in the opposite direction. And if you're using one of these, you can lock your knife so that it stops moving around on you. Now the reason I do one line in the other direction and then flip it around to trace it the other direction is because when I start off the line, I'm tending not I'm tending to not push as hard and so it's harder to follow in my own footsteps. I guess. And if you have a Dremel, you can just, which I do, um, you can just cut this out with that. It's not that big a deal. I just think this might be a little bit easier to get clean lines. Because I did do that one Game Boy Advance a while back, that white one, with the backlight kit. And I cut out the viewport with the Dremel. It turned out alright. Could have been better, but could have been way worse too. Unintended side effect of these holes is it gives me a nice stopping point. I don't accidentally go too far and, and uh, scuff up the shell or something. Or I guess leave a mark on the shell in a spot that I don't want to ruin. Okay, I need some pliers and I think I left mine by my 3D printer. So I'll be right back. All right, I got my trusty multi-tool here. I'm just gonna try and grip it right at the very edge and try and bend it 
and I'm not having any luck. The plastic is too soft. There we go. It's hard finding something to bite onto when you're cutting something this small or thin, I guess. There we go. Let's try over here again. And that's not coming off the way I wanted, but good enough. We can work with that. And of course, the more time you spend scoring, the easier this will uh, this will work. right there. How interesting. Hmm, it kind of splintered up. That's weird. Probably should have spent more time scoring. It will. Too late. Oh, I definitely need to score this once more. Once that's broken off, you can just go over it again with the knoid to clean up the brakes. Especially right here. I want that nice and smooth. you score, the less cleanup you'll have to do as well. All right. Could have gone better, but also could have gone way worse. Now if we put that on here, you don't see any bezel. But if you look at it at an angle, you do see this white. So step the next with a black Sharpie. I don't have black, I have blue. I have a uh, fine point black. Crap, that's not even a Sharpie, never mind. Ooh. Oh yeah, I have a short one. We'll just color the inside of the bezel. The 
In my case, I'm picking blue because that way it'll match the shell and not look completely terrible. But we just don't want to see this white. I'll also probably go over these edges with some sandpaper or something to smooth it out. I'm not going to be doing that. Okay. There we go. Only takes a couple minutes, but the effect is significant. So next we would be sticking the LCD in here, which is right here. So retro modding, not retro mod, well yeah, retro modding is making a uh, spacer, a 3D printable spacer, but Funny Playing has also made a 3D printable spacer to get this in here so you don't have to worry about, you know, is it is it crooked, is it, you know, even lined up right? Um, I was also making a spacer, not 3D printed, but uh, a PCB style one, like I've done in the past. But as I was just discussing, it's not sized properly because I didn't know that they had moved the LCD on, or that they had moved the window. So it works great using the pocket spacing, but it's not really very useful here. Um, anyway, here is what my prototypes looked like. Just break that off here. This is actually the Game Boy Pocket Spacer. I had those made at the same time because it was literally free. It just filled in the white space in there. Uh, but you'd have to file off these nubs and then this would fit right on there. Drop right in. But as it turns out, the tolerances are a little bit different on this shell compared to the one I was measuring. So that's not quite going to work. Uh, or maybe it will. I just have to shave off these sharp bits. So I'm going to pause for a minute, uh, file this down. Maybe I can make it work regardless. And... Um, you know, clean up all these shavings. I'll be back. All right, so I got it shaved down a little bit. I had to cut a notch into it right there, and then once I shaved down all the little spiky protrudy bits, it actually drops right in. Um, surprised that it fits as well as it does, but you know that, that was totally intention, totally planned. I had no doubt whatsoever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, and then this would go in there. The intention was that you'd seat that into the bottom of the uh, spacer there, and then that would that would give you a pretty darn good idea of where it goes. But I know it needs to go up a little bit. Um, what I should have done is I should have measured how off it was on this side before dropping it in there, but I'm just going to wing it because I'm not using the adhesive. At this point in the install, if you were using the adhesive, you would pop this in here. You see there's this little cutout in the bottom that goes towards the bottom. And then there's this cutout in the side that goes towards the LCD. It just goes like that. You peel off this side, stick it down, and then you can push the middle out through the front. I'm going to save this because we're going to complete the full install uh, sometime in the next couple weeks when I get new spacers in or when I get my new 3D printer and can 3D print the uh, recommended spacer. 
But in the meantime, we're going to install it like this anyway. So you'd put that in there, and then you could drop your spacer in. And the spacer, surprisingly, come on. Oh, I can, I suppose I can adjust the corners a little bit, but it doesn't actually matter too much. Um, that'll stick down a little bit on the adhesive, I guess. And then you would just line that up in there, line that up in there, drop it down, and then Bob Jaunty. But, like I said, we're not using this because I'm not going to get the alignment right first try. I need to get my spacer sorted. Uh, let's actually... Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of experimentation here and see if I can't get this right. So I'm going to tape this on here. This is what this lens is for. I know this is the wrong lens, but I could still use it for making sure everything's lined up. I'm going to insert this again. And uh, oh, rather than trying to get my power supply hooked up, I'm just going to put batteries in here. Ribbon, there it is. To plug this in first to this. up come on I'm trying to go through the viewfinder on the camera that's not going very well okay I'll go like that I'm going to tape this down so that it doesn't fall over when I flip it around remember this tape came with the uh, rainbow IPS I'm gonna use it here for this install Even though it's double-sided tape, I'm just going to peel off the one side and stick it like that, just so when I flip that over, that doesn't fall out. Now, I can insert that like that and move it around until it's all lined up because the left and right, I think, are the same, almost. It's hard to tell, let me get the uh, new lens on here. Wanted to test that out, but that's not happening, I guess. God, this is terrible, okay. Ah, oh, and of course I just grabbed it the wrong way. I'm gonna peel this off. I can stick the tape on. This is roughly how this is going to look. I'm going to drop that out of there because I just did something. Shorted and reset. There we go. One more try. Alright, so it looks like it needs to go over just a hair that way. But otherwise, that looks pretty darn good. Oh, it's so close. Bit of 
tape. I don't know why that just reset once again. But this is how we're doing it for now. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here because at this point, this is just me messing around um, trying to get my bracket fixed for next time. So I'll be right back. All right. Sorry if you're trying to follow along at home and this is this video is just kind of a pain in the ass to follow because I'm, I'm not doing this quite right and unfortunately I just don't have the right tools, um, the right, yeah, I, I don't have the right tools at my exposure to fix the issues that mine has, um, but specifically because I'm trying to use a bracket and I just, I don't, I can't because my printer is down. Uh, I am going to apply it with double-sided tape. I'm not too worried because as it turns out, aside from this little white square in the middle of the shell, tape doesn't stick to it worth a damn. That is one of the, uh, I'm, I'm not really, I don't want to call it a downside of the texture, but it's just one of the um, things you need to consider when it comes to this texture. Uh, but just a little bit of double-sided tape. And again, this is instead of that sticky gasket that I highly recommend using, but I am not using. worst part about double-sided tape is getting this off here. Okay. But I've got the measurements I needed to get, so I think we're good to stick this down. Now would be the time to peel this off. Again, I'm going to leave it on for the time being. Oop, I forgot to peel this off. And then I am going to place this in here. I have made a, I have scribed a line on the inside that I need to line the bottom of this up to. And that should do it. That's not going anywhere, not anytime soon. But we can get it later. Okay, that's all that matters. Set this stuff aside. Uh, you know what? Actually, I am going to use a little bit more tape. I'm going to use it just like the manufacturer recommends, but even though this is for a completely different kit. Stick that on there, just trying to get the very edge of the LCD, because it sticks to the LCD very well. And I can peel that up later. Hopefully that's not a mistake, but that's future Mako's problem, I guess. And again, not peeling off the back because we're just using it as regular tape, even though it's double-sided tape.
but uh, there we go. I'm slightly blinded because this thing is very reflective and I just got my light in my eyes. Kind of like that, except I got the bright one. Where is it? I don't know. I suppose it doesn't matter. Oh, it's blocked by the phone. Ta-da. Okay, anyway. Getting distracted. Moving on. Let's go ahead and put this bad boy together. Uh, I forgot one thing. Let's turn on the iron. Get the buttons in here first, though. I'm just using the buttons that come with this shell. Could also use the original buttons that came with the Game Boy. Okay. If we want sound, I need to pull this out of here. Actually, I suppose I don't need to. Um, if you're using your original shell, like I said, you got to pull this apart, snip off those two um, two screw posts, yada yada. Uh, but we also need this. Oh, I need to remove the motherboard to get that out anyway. I was thinking I'd just take a shortcut and snip the wires. But. It's never that easy, is it? As always, when you have your shell open, it's a good time as any to take the time to clean it. Especially if it's one like this that's as disgusting as this is. I just want a closer look at the screen, I guess. Ew. All right. Set that aside. Soldering iron should be heated up. That's also gross. Just pop that out of there. This Game Boy could actually probably use a new speaker. Let's see how this cleans up. I love masking tape. It's so versatile. It just it, it picks up this kind of stuff. It's great. I think this needs more help than uh, I can give it with masking tape, but it does work. I think it works. Pretty sure it works. Tested it. But this goes in here. Doesn't matter which wire is which. Um, there is polarity when it comes to speakers, but the polarity does not matter if you only have one. If you have two speakers, you need to make sure the polarity is matched, otherwise they could be putting out harmful interference and canceling each other out. Harmful in that they cancel each other out, not harmful that they'll um, damage your ears or something. What the fuck? There we go. My iron's hot enough for these. Bump it up a little. There we go. Not perfect, but it'll get the job done. Ideally, I would have liked those flush, but that's okay. It's not like there's anything for them to short on. All right, so now this goes together like this. 
want to snap the connector onto the ribbon. You don't, you don't want to lay it down flat and then press because that's going to put a lot of unnecessary pressure on the LCD. Um, could cause damage. We wouldn't want that, would we? And, oh, wait, before I put this in, there is one more step. Remember at the beginning of the video, all like 40 minutes ago, or however the heck long that was, I said my kit was missing pieces? There are four little spacers that you're supposed to put on uh, this screw post, this screw post, this screw post, and this screw post that help keep this motherboard in line for um, whatever, you know, keep it, keep it flat without putting too much pressure on the rest of the kit. I don't have those spacers. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Your kit should have them. If not, contact the vendor you got it from and uh, go from there. But now would be the time to install them. All right. And that just prevents that from getting stuck. So you, I think, hmm. I'm worried that, you know, tightening it too much will prevent my wheel from working, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm going to put some screws in. making sure these are all the way down. It's it's hard to tell with a new shell because you're just threading the, the screw holes for the first time. Okay. Don't want to over tighten them though. Could cause damage. Either the shell or the kit. Neither is fun. All right. So I'm going to put these two screws in here, but I'm not going to tighten them all the way. I'm just going to spin them down until they get really close to the motherboard and move them. It. Buttons feel like buttons. That's seated, that's happy, that's that's actually inserted this time. Alright, I think we're good to put this back together. Um, normally there would be a little lip that you have to cut off here, like on the original shell there's this, but this uh, case is already IPS ready, so we don't have to trim that on this one. I don't think you even have to trim that for this mod. Yeah. You don't have to trim that for this mod, so don't bother trimming that. I guess let's finish the install here. Why am I missing two screws? That's lovely. Okay. I swear I didn't lose them. Again, using the new screws my shell came with. Oop. Now I'm missing three screws. <laughs> Get in there. Alright, I'm pretty sure that's one of the missing screws. Looks like it. Let me find that screw. Be right back. Never mind, I didn't even have to look hard.
and we're just going to omit that last screw because of who I am as a person. I don't know where it is. All right. And we're just going to turn it on and all's going to be perfect and there's going to be no issues. I'm going to pull off this bit of tape here, move it down because it's holding my lens on. But that way we can see the battery light and kill my lights. And here goes nothing. Yeah, look at that, perfectly aligned. That usually doesn't happen. Nice and loud, but that's basically the Game Boy. It has nothing to do with the kit. There's no amp or anything built in. Looks pretty decent. I mean, I don't see... I mean, I do see plenty of flame, frame dropping and visual artifacts, but that's literally just the game. Pokemon Yellow looks terrible. Um, let's test out Pokemon Pinball. I never tested that on the last video on the Game Boy Pocket that I did, and I haven't been testing that lately. I don't know why, um, but this game is pretty good to test with because it issues that LCD reset every time the screen goes uh, from the top to the bottom, and quite frankly, it looks fine to me. I don't see any issues. But specifically what I'm looking for is if you refer back to an older video of mine, I'll throw a link in the description if I remember, uh, for the Freckle Shack kit, the Batch 1 Freckle Shack had some really bad issues with uh, delay. Basically, the instead of just dropping the current frame and moving on to the next frame like the original screen does, Freckle Shack would drop like uh, 120 to 150 frames and you'd lose like a second of gameplay so by the time the screen refreshed like if if it's at the top screen come on I can get there eventually I swear or not if it's at the top screen and it falls back down to transition to the lower screen by the time the lower screen starts displaying again um, you know your ball could already be in the hole and that was that was a problem. Uh, I think in that particular case, Pokemon Pinball was the only game that was broken. Now, I'm not saying that other games didn't have that issue, because they certainly did, and this is my Easy Flash Junior here, uh, but other games weren't literally unplayable, if you'll pardon the uh, phrasing. So it boots up my Everdraw or Easy Flash just fine, unlike the Game Boy Pocket. Uh, and I do have the Pixel Grid on at the moment. I wanted to boot my demo, not Pokemon. Oh well, we're already there. I'm going to turn the Pixel Grid off. You just have to press, you have to click the wheel and hold it for at least four seconds. But I'm doing that because I prefer it off. I think it looks significantly better, and you can probably tell just from the video how much better the contrast is. Let me turn it back on just for comparison. Is it on? It's on. And then off again. There we go. Now I will say, it looks significantly more dramatic in the video than it does in person, the difference in contrast, but it is still a pretty significant difference and I like it much better with it off. To change the brightness, you just flip it up or down. To change the palettes, you click it once and then you can flip it up or down to go forward or backwards through the palettes. You can do that palette because that matches my Game Boy. And then click it again to go back to brightness mode. I don't see any frame dropping. Uh, I haven't run my frame dropping test, but since this is pretty much identical to the Game Boy Pocket hardware, um, literally same markings, it looks like it's the same firmware even because I plugged in a Game Boy Pocket ribbon and that seemed to work just fine. I expect it will perform pretty similarly. Um, let's try 
reset and I just click the button on the cart. No, we don't need to back that up. Let's go to scrolling bars test. I'll bring the camera in and I'll even set the Game Boy down. So remember, with this test, when that S in scrolling crosses the left-hand side of the screen, the ROM is issuing the Game Boy a screen reset command. Now, I've been over this before, but I don't expect that everyone watching this video has watched all of my videos, and that's fine. Uh, but the stock screen in the Game Boy doesn't handle resets. You know, it, it looks pretty much like that. You see these visual artifacts and glitching. Uh, there are some aftermarket kits that handle these resets quite a bit better, but like I was mentioning earlier with the uh, Freckle Shack Batch 1 kit, that one in particular handles these resets terribly. It's, it's awful. But one other thing I'm looking for, because the Funny Playing Game Boy Color kit has this issue, after a reset, about 60 frames later or one second, it'll... Uh, it'll show a tearing artifact. I don't see that here, just like I didn't see it on the Game Boy Pocket kit. So, I don't know, it looks pretty good to me. Um, I'd say that's basically as good as it gets, man. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's try a couple more things here. What else do I have? Gradient test, I think that's what we want to run. This way we can uh, click through the gradients. On the left, well, it looks pretty much like that. Um, we have white, light gray, dark gray, and then black. So we click the wheel once to go into gradient mode, and then we can just flip through the gradients here. and there's some like 36 gradients. I like that there are a bunch of different gray gradients. I like this gradient personally, or this uh, this color palette. I don't know, looks kind of like, it It looks way more green on the camera. Uh, in person it looks kind of olive. But we'll keep going, oops, gotta click it again. I guess after a few seconds of no input, it'll go back to, uh, ooh, and that's reversed. There's like a much brighter olive palette and then green. Yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, okay. There's quite a few palettes. Um, I'm pretty sure it remembers the palette that you last selected. So let me select this pink one. We'll give it a few seconds just in case. And I'm going to power cycle the Game Boy. And we're going to try, just for shits and giggles, just to make sure, my EverDrive. And I think that's the same palette. I've already completely forgotten what I set, but it's not that blue palette, so... Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, there we go. Let's try one more test. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. You can probably hear my button doing some funky thing. And I'm not very happy with it, but it's comment for a different video. All right, last test. We're paying attention to two things here. Uh, first, we're paying attention to this dude's chain. You can see it's kind of flickering on and off. Um, in person, I can see it way better than on camera. On camera, it actually looks more like the like what it's supposed to look like. Uh, long story short, the original Game Boy devs didn't really have a cheap way to achieve transparency in sprites. So they had a workaround to just toggle the sprite on and off really quickly uh, at 
basically 60 hertz, same as the screen refresh, or well, 59.97 or whatever the hell it is, but you know what I mean. Um, and because of the terrible pixel response time of the original screens, it basically just made it look transparent. Because the pixel response of these screens is so much better, you could see it actually flickering. And I mean, there's no real workaround. That's what the game is doing. It's being faithful to what the game is programming. It's being faithful to the game's programming, excuse me. Um, so I don't really know a good way to fix that. You could try, you could try programming in uh, a detection for that sort of flickering and just display it as a uh, transparency instead, but that seems like a whole, a whole mess uh, on the programming side. I don't even know how you would do that, but either way, uh, one thing we're looking for in particular is if that chain, if there are any visual glitches when the screen transitions from left to right. And I mean, aside from the flickering, I don't see any issues with it, uh, but like I said, that flickering is to be expected. And the other thing I'm looking at are if there's any ghosting artifacts of these posts uh, that I've seen on some of the other funny playing kits, particularly the particularly the Game Boy Advance kit and the Game Boy Advance SP kits. You can see uh, artifacts from the posts on those kits, but I'm not seeing anything here. Looks pretty good. So yeah, my verdict on this kit so far, absolutely wonderful kit. Uh, the install is a little bit more involved than say the Moon IPS, the yellow one that I did pretty recently, but the, dis the image is so much bigger and quite frankly it looks, it just looks so much better that, um, you know, I don't, I don't even care that it requires some extra workarounds or uh, some extra work, excuse me, to get it going. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go play with this some more. I guess I'm not gonna do too much messing around because I still need to actually get this installed properly, but I need to fix my bracket and order more brackets before I can do so. Um, until next time, I guess. If there's anything y'all want me to test out in particular, hit me up in the comments and uh, I'll can have a discussion there. Uh, if you have any comments on my process here or Retro 6, um, well, if you have any comments on my process, like I said, hit me up in the comments. If you have any comments on Retro 6, believe me, I am doing another video for this. I just, I've already filmed the first half of it. I'm just, you know, I wanna use this and get a feel for how the shell is. Um, and I'll come back to that when I think I've experienced it and not just given it a first impression. And we'll discuss that in that video. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a long one. I certainly didn't mean for it to go on nearly as long as it did, but here we are. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Be kind to each other. Have a good night. Now, I just noticed this as I was finishing up. There is actually a glitch. If you look at Link's hat, it's flickering. And if we move down, it stops flickering. But if we go all the way back up to the top, you see it starts flickering again. I don't know if that's flash cart related or what, but at the top, it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Let me real quickly try Pokemon again. Sorry, I know I said we're, I was done, but I just noticed an issue. I'm totally willing to blame the uh, flash cart for that. Because flash carts do weird things when it comes to power consumption. I also just realized that I can't actually get my character up to the top of the screen in this game, but I can get NPCs up there, and I don't see it doing it with them. So maybe that's just a weird quirk with Link's Awakening, or maybe that's a weird quirk with the game. I don't know. Let me go find Link's Awakening. I'll be right back.
There it is. Found it. So let's try the actual cart. I even have the same save. I'm gonna go to the same area. And yeah, I'm, I don't know. I guess that's just something weird with the game. I kind of feel better knowing it's not the flash cart and that it's just a weird game quirk, but well, there you go. All right, now I'm done. I'll, uh, if I find any other issues, we'll talk about it next time. Thanks for watching, guys.